Hey guys, Matt here. So I thought I would do another video where I just talk about stuff. So last time I did album discussions, but this time I want to talk about my musical journey. So how did I first become a musician? Um, how did I discover the kinds of music I like? Why do I like it? That sort of thing. So, um, I mean, I had been listening to music since I was a little kid. I, uh, you know, like a lot of children's music, you know, growing up, of course, and, uh, I had a little toy guitar, and I would pretend to, you know, perform while while I was listening to the music. So I guess wanting to play an instrument and you know be a be a performer of some sort is something that I uh, have wanted to do since I was very very young. I didn't play my first real instrument until uh, I got into middle school. So when I was in the sixth grade, so about. 11, 12 years old, they started me on the bassoon. Now, the bassoon is a wonderful instrument, um, but I didn't really like being in the band, so um, it, it's a good instrument. Um, the reason I don't play it anymore is because they are so prohibitively expensive. A cheap one is about $10,000, so um, after high school, I, I never picked it up again for that reason. Um, it, the, the instrument was always provided to me by the school. Um, but yeah, it was a good instrument to play, it was fun to play, had a good sound. Um, the problem was, you know, being in the band, um, you know, I was beholden to other people's deadlines, other people's requirements of what they wanted me to play, when they wanted me to play it. So it was it was difficult for me to sort of branch off and, and do my own thing, because I, I had to practice the music that was given to me by the band directors, and to... Um, also practiced the music that was given to me by my uh, teacher that I got private lessons from. So it was always, um, it felt like an assignment. It felt just like something I had to cross off my list. Like practice for a while, um, you know, learn this, um, and, and that's pretty much it. It just felt like raw memorization to me. Um, there was no... Uh, I just didn't really feel anything when I, when I would play music. Um, so I didn't take up guitar until I was around 14. Um, I just decided, hey, this is something I want to do. Uh, I started listening to more you know, music around this time. My sister had gotten a guitar and played for a little bit and just never really expressed much of an interest in it. So I uh, would take her guitar and I would practice on my own and I would learn my own stuff. So, as far as what kind of music I liked, so when it came to, uh, like, popular music, the music that I really listened to, so I was always into stuff with a lot of melody to it, so uh, I was into a lot of, like, that 90s pop music when I was young, like 10, 11, around that, but when I got to around 13, 14, I started getting into pretty much just whatever was on the radio on the rock station. Uh, alternative rock and pop punk were real popular um, in my age group, so, you know, there was a radio station that would play all that stuff. Now, the internet uh, wasn't really what it is today, so the concept of, you know, getting on YouTube and looking for new music just didn't exist back then. Um, YouTube didn't exist until I was in college, um, and there really weren't a whole lot of places to stream music. Music streaming just wasn't really a thing at the time. So it was hard to discover music that wasn't really, you know, something that my friends told me about, um, or that wasn't, you know, played on the radio or anything like that. So, um, you know, and, uh, I, I would try to listen to the classic rock stations, but the classic rock station where I was from played a lot of stuff like Southern rock or, um, uh, like the early British invasion stuff or like blues rock. And that wasn't really my thing. I just, it never really appealed to me that much. Um, so, you know, and, you know, progressive rock isn't really radio friendly, so it's not something that I, um, it's not something that I uh, was really exposed to. But I know something else that I started listening to around this time was video game music, specifically stuff uh, from Square Enix video games, so Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, uh, Parasite Eve, all of that. If it was written by 
those big three Japanese composers, Yoko Shimomura, Nobuo Uematsu, or Yasunori Mitsuda, I was pretty much listening to it. I remember purchasing the Final Fantasy VII soundtrack, which was four discs long, and just listening to those songs over and over and over again. I loved video game music. I really liked the electronic sound of it, because this was before, like, symphony orchestras really played video game music. So now, with, you know, sound cards and stuff the way that they are... Um, music from video games is very orchestral, but back then it really wasn't. It was a lot of MIDI uh, files and MIDI compositions, so you had it, it, it felt uh, very much like it was composed on like an electronic keyboard or whatever. So this is when I started getting into keyboards and synths, because that's what the majority of video game music uh, sounded like. Um, so I, I remember thinking that, that just it just had an incredible sound to me, and I'm like, well, how cool would it be if video game music um, and rock music kind of merged. And so I started kind of just, you know, making up riffs on the guitar around this uh, time, and I started messing around with the kind of video game music sound, but as like, you know, as a guitar rock version. So I was coming up with melodies that sounded like they could have been taken out of a video game. Of course, I didn't have any recording equipment back then, so um, don't bother looking for them. They're not online or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, of course, video game music and that synth music was also really my gateway into progressive rock because that's how I discovered the band Yes. Now, uh, my dad was a really big fan of Yes. I mean, still is, of course, but um, he was a really big fan of Yes, but whenever I started playing the guitar, he started trying to introduce me to Yes, and it just didn't take um, because I know a lot of the stuff that he was sharing with me was a lot of the more poppy-sounding Yes stuff. So, like... Um, for example, like, you know, I've seen All Good People, which really isn't a progressive rock song. And I would, and uh, he would share with me, you know, stuff like Roundabout, which, you know, it had that progressive side, but didn't really, um, it wasn't like these big, like, symphonic prog epics that I, I guess I apparently wanted to hear. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Steve Howe's Acoustic Sessions, which, you know, he's a wonderful guitar player, but that wasn't really what I was into. Like, that's what I thought Yes was, and that's not really what I was into. Uh, but then I played the real-time strategy PC game, Homeworld, and the end credits song was composed by Yes, and this is exactly what I was looking for. This was, you know, because it sounded like that, that blend of video game music and rock music. You had electric guitar, you had, you know, like, keyboards, just synth keyboards playing real fast and everything, big, like, multi-part vocal harmonies, and it just sounded so big and so epic, and I absolutely loved that, so I ended up buying the album that that song was on, and if if it's possible to burn a groove into a into a CD, I'm sure I, I did. Um, and then, you know, I started listening to their other big epic stuff, you know, songs like Close to the Edge, uh, you know, t the Tales from Topographic Oceans album, you know, all that really, really epic yes stuff. And I'm like, where have these guys been my whole life? And But the thing is, I didn't know that progressive rock was a genre yet. I thought that's just what that band played. Uh, I thought they were the they were the only ones that played that kind of music because I'd never heard anything like them. Because, you know, like I said, on the classic rock station, you know, other bands of that same era didn't sound like that. They sounded very bluesy. You know, the whole, like, just the riff, the intro riff, you know, going and, and you know, playing some guitar solos and stuff. Um... You know, and so so this sounded very, very unique to me. So for a while, it was pretty much all I listened to. I made some, like, mix albums that had my favorite songs by them and just listened to those for, like, a year. I'm not even kidding. Constantly. Um, I pretty much stopped listening to any of the stuff that came on the radio because my big thing is uh, the reason I listen to, like, alternative rock and... Um, pop punk is because I literally thought that was the most melodic thing out there, you know, because like I said, internet wasn't what it is today, so I couldn't really look up, you know, any additional kind of stuff like that, so, you know, I was listening to this, and it just, it just felt, uh, it's so, it's so different to me than listening to regular music, like when I listen to regular, you know, like, you know, punk or, or, you know, alternative or, you know, anything like that, I mean, I can, you know, groove to it or I can, I can enjoy it, I can tap my foot to it or whatever, but with this, like, when, when I would listen to Yes, it felt like I was, like I was part of the music, like I was surrounded by it and, you know, like when in Star Wars, when they talk about what it feels like to feel the force, that's what it felt like to me. Like I could feel this energy field around me and within me. Um, I'm not a religious person at all. I don't believe in the supernatural, but I imagine this is what 
religious people feel when they say that they, they feel the, the divine presence or whatever when, when they go to church or whatever. That's probably what this feels like to me. Um, so, like I said, for the longest time, I thought they were the only band out there that played that kind of music. Uh, but then I was reading in this magazine, and it started talking about this band called Dream Theater. And they said, Dream Theater is a progressive metal band. And I'm like, well, I'm not really into metal, because at the time, stuff like new metal uh, was very popular. So, like, Limp Bizkit, Korn, um, and I, you know, Slipknot, and I thought that's what metal was. So I wasn't really into metal. I'm like, well, it's just noise. So I'm like, well, I don't know about the metal part, but something about that word progressive made me think. And they're, you know, they going on about how Dream Theater is this, like, new up-and-coming progressive rock band. And I'm like, progressive rock sounds like the name of what you would call what Yes does. So I actually Googled it, and I discovered, yes, that is what it is. And so now I had a search term, and I started just Googling different bands and looking at different timelines, different subgenres. So you got, like, symphonic rock, uh, symphonic progressive, progressive metal, eclectic progressive, um, jazz progressive, neo-progressive, just so many different kinds. And so then I started to narrow down which genres of progressive rock I liked and which ones I did not. Turns out I am not a fan of quote-unquote mature progressive bands, you know, the ones that are more psychedelic and more experimental. I'm not really into King Crimson. I'm not really into Pink Floyd. I'm not really into Porcupine Tree or Tool or anything like that. I'm into the quote-unquote cheesy ones that dress up in capes and sing about elves and have cool noodly keyboard solos and stuff. That's what I'm into. Um, it's just it's just so fantastical to me. So this is when I started really discovering um, a lot more bands. You know, I discovered Rush. I discovered, um, you, you know, I, I started getting into uh, the, some of the neo-progressive ba bands like Pendragon, and it just kind of went from there. It snowballed, and it continues to snowball. I'm constantly discovering new bands out there. Um, and, you know, it was it was also, so that was high school for me. When I was in college, I finally discovered metal. Now, uh, like I said, I did not like metal because new metal was very popular, um, and I thought it was all just a bunch of noise and didn't have melodies or anything like that, and was just like people screaming and stuff. You know, I liked old stuff like Black Sabbath and Ozzy Osbourne and you know Judas Priest and stuff like that, um, but I, I didn't really like um, any newer metal. But then I discovered the European metal scene. Um, so power metal and symphonic metal and... These are bands that do for metal what progressive rock does for the rest of the rock genres. So, you know, power metal and symphonic metal, a lot of fantasy lyrics, a lot of, you know, big melodies and vocal harmonies and lots of keyboard and synth and um, fantasy lyrics. And even the, the um, a lot of times the performers will dress in fantasy, you know, type costumes. So bands like Twilight Force, Hammerfall, Nightwish, um, Glory Hammer, you know, I, that's when I started getting into all this. Uh, so to me, it, it feels like a close cousin or probably not, not even that, like a sibling of progressive metal or progressive rock. Um, and that's how I, that's why I discovered all those bands. And eventually I got some halfway decent recording equipment and decided I'm going to start writing that kind of music, uh, less metal oriented, more just standard progressive rock, uh, symphonic prog and neo prog kind of, uh, oriented stuff. And that's why I, that's why I started writing the music I did. Now, why, why do I like this kind of music? I kind of touched on it already. Um, but I know a lot of people say that prog rock has no soul, I disagree. Um, whenever I listen to just standard rock music or pop music, you know, with lyrics talking about things like, oh, hey, baby, let's go dancing, let's go drinking, let's, you know, do promiscuous things, I don't feel anything. Uh, and, you know, listening to bands like, you know, Led Zeppelin, I don't dislike Led Zeppelin. It's just um, compared to the other bands doing stuff around that same time, their music is, I mean, it's decent. I could I could listen to it for a while, but it's not... It doesn't give me that feeling. You know, uh, like I said, listening listening to progressive rock, those, like, keyboard solos and, you know, chords and, like, symphonic, inf you know, classical influence type stuff, and even with, like, power metal and stuff, the, the fantasy lyrics, the philosophical lyrics, the um, big, just 
you know, big chords and melodies and things, um, and the classical influence and all that just speaks to me so much. Um, the way that I, you know, like I said, the way I describe it is like, um, you know, with some feeling this powerful force just around me and, and moving, you know, within me and stuff. It's, it's like, um, there's a song by Genesis and one of the lyrics is, can't you feel our souls ignite? And that's what I feel like. It feels like my soul has ignited and it's, it's on fire, but in, in like a good way, like it's invigorated, um, you know, whenever I hear those melodies and I don't get that from really any other genres of music besides these ones that I mentioned. So, you know, prog and, you know, power metal and symphonic metal and, and, uh, I also listen to a lot of epic classical music, and I still listen to video game music. Just just those those big instrumental melodies um, are really like what do it for me. Uh, I I would say um, that it it feels so much more immersive than any video game or TV show or novel or any you know any work of fiction that I've ever read. Um, these these songs and these melodies make me feel like like a kid discovering Narnia and going on this amazing uh, adventure, um, so much more immersive than anything else I've ever experienced, which um, it's kind of interesting that quote-unquote nerd stuff has gotten so popular lately, like, um, you know, you have all, you know, like Star Wars, Game of Thrones, shows like Avatar The Last Airbender and The Dragon Prince and all that, uh, video games like Skyrim and things, that these are so popular, that fantasy and science fiction have just become so mainstream, but not for music, um, which is very, very strange to me. Um, so, why, I, I mean, this is an open-ended question. This is n nothing that I know the answer to, so it's not rhetorical or anything. Um, you know, why, why has escapism prevailed so much and proliferated so much in other forms of entertainment, but not music, um, which is a shame because I feel like people would really get a lot of enjoyment out of this. Like I love, you know, listening to songs that take me to these wonderful, amazing, uh, other worlds. And, um, I love the feeling that I get when I, when I listen to them. And that's where my song Frizen comes from. It's, it's supposed to be how I feel when I, when I listen to this kind of music. So that's why I enjoy it, and that's why these genres are, like, almost 100% of what I listen to. Um, so, yeah, that's that's why I'm into it. That's my musical journey. Um, I guess, you know, I, I mentioned when I started playing guitar, um, flute is fairly new to me. It's I've only been playing flute for a couple years, and I'm honestly not that good because I don't practice that much. But uh, that was just something I wanted to do to kind of enhance my... Uh, my, my songs, you know, and kind of how they sound, but, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I was going to say about all of that, so let me know what you think in the comments.